Life's full of choices. Y'all ready for a message? Title of the message is Make Up Your Mind. Oh. Yeah. We all do. We, every day we have choices to make. We have decisions to make. And uh, this morning, some of you all had to make a decision to get up and out of bed. Amen? Some of y'all had to make a decision on what to put on to come to church. And praise God, y'all listen to put something on. <laughs> y'all have a choice to come to church this morning. How many of y'all, is there anybody by a show of hands? Was there anybody that decided to come to church this morning and thought about not coming anyway after, after glory? Okay, hallelujah. Thank you for your honesty. I did too. <laughs> I told my wife, nobody there likes me. She said, you're the preacher. You got to go anyway. Praise God. <laughs> These lights aren't on. Man, you forget about your servants and what they do. I had to go find out where he was hiding the water. I had to go. Now the lights are on. Praise God. Those people out there in YouTube land, they'll appreciate that. Turn your Bibles to James chapter 1. You know, the Bible tells us how to make decisions. It tells us what we got to do to make the right decisions. And like my brother Dustin said one time, don't just say, Lord, give me the answer, and you open the Bible, because it could say Judas went out and hanged himself. Right. So <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. But there is wisdom in the Word of God, and it will tell us what to do. Amen. James 1, 5 through 8, and I think this is the King James. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Interestingly, one of the persons that came up for prayer a while ago asked for wisdom. He's receiving that right now. Amen. But let him ask in faith. Okay, this is important or you won't get it. Nothing wavering. For he that waveth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you can ask for wisdom, but if you don't believe and you don't expect, then you shouldn't have asked to begin with. If God is your God, you will believe and you will expect, and you're, you're standing on that. Come on now. Everybody can say amen. We're going to make our, our minds about all kinds of things. Some decisions are harder to make than others. And sometimes we make the decision and we realize later maybe it's because of a godly counsel that we made the wrong decision. And I don't care what it is, you know. I had a joke here, but the Lord said don't share it. Um, how many of y'all, I know most of you men, you like to have your back to the wall and see the door when you go to a restaurant. How many men in here don't care when they're sitting in a restaurant? One, two, yeah, amen. My decision now is I got to figure out how to sit so I can see everybody, so I don't care about the door anymore. <laughs> amen. So, but we got to have the decisions, you know, and, and 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 we have to make them, and it's based on something. But if we don't base it off the wisdom from God, then we might be sorry later. Decision-making is an unavoidable thing in our life. Like I said, you even had to decide whether to get up and get dressed and come today. And every day we have to make decisions. We have choices. We have choices about what we watch, what we listen to. And all of these, I, I know some people, they, they do it because they like it. You know, and they're just like, and I said, you know what? You can find a Christian song that has any beat you want. I don't care if it's from rap to country to hard acid rock. You can find that beat, and they'll be screaming about Jesus instead. Amen. So there's no reason to listen to any other type of music. Honestly, if you pray about it, God's probably going to tell you, yep, Pastor Monty just told you what you did. Yeah. That was God, not me. It's not in my notes. But there's, there's just so much to make a decision about. Who are you going to hang out with? Not who are you going to go minister to, but who are you going to hang out with? I'm talking about really hanging out. Being a, she needs to be a like-minded person. Brother or sister in Christ, amen? amen? Now, I wish I could tell you that you could open up your Bible and it tell you exactly, but God gives us principles. There's going to be five 
principles we're going to cover today. James 1 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, which was part of the opening scripture, you should ask. You should ask God, which is the first principle. Ask God for wisdom. A lot of us pray, Lord, please open the right door, close all the other doors, and I'll know which door to walk through. And God's going, well, if you pray for wisdom and read my word, you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Later on in James, we read, you don't have it because you ain't asked for it. Honestly, I mean, I know I've caught myself before praying about all this, and Lord, if you'll just make, and I didn't say, Lord, give me the wisdom to figure out what I need to do. Amen? Amen? No, some of us, we panic, which means we don't do anything, you know? Or we do the wrong thing because we make our decision based off our feelings and emotions. I'm getting way ahead of myself. But I tell you, This country, I, I, I don't, I didn't look it up. I was going to, I forgot to look it up. But every city has a tarot card reader and a poem reader. And Gatesville's got one somewhere. Now, there ain't no sign on Main Street saying it, but there's one somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It is, there's no little town without it. No big city, obviously. They, they're in marquee lights. But I want you to know, I hope it, if you're, if you are a true believing Christian and, and, and God is your God, that he is your tarot card reader you know what i'm saying he is your palm reader you seek wisdom from him he will give you your answers amen you know what's really nice too is he says without finding fault this is so reassuring because that means that if you ask god for help he's not going to belittle you he's going he's not going to say well it's about time you know all this other stuff you did wrong He's, he doesn't do that. God doesn't get tired of us asking for wisdom. And I don't care where or what it's about. What, what to buy for your meal. I'm going to start meddling in a minute. <laughs> but God's attitude is to, he wants to give wisdom without making us feel foolish. He wants to give us wisdom without making us feel dumb. Only Satan wants that. God just never gets tired of it. So the first thing is ask God for wisdom. And I already covered it. The second thing is believe God has a solution. Now, I, there's, I, some of my own brothers and sisters from this group right here have prayed before for a healing and walked away from that person in my presence and said, sure hate it for him. Well, if you prayed and asked and you, he's your God, you, sh you got to believe he has the solution and that he's going to do what you prayed for. Amen. Amen. All right. Got three that time. Glory to God. <sighs> I'll tell a little story. It's, I think it's from the first. Yeah, it's from the first book. Um, me and Tammy, we've done a lot of miles, believe it or not. I mean, I didn't used to have a bicycle. I used to have a real motorcycle. Amen. And uh, I thousands of miles pulling a camper behind my motorcycle. We went to Indiana one time, and Tammy knows that I pray about where to park. How many of y'all pray about where to park, honestly? A couple of y'all? Praise God. Sometimes. Okay. I have been guilty, but anyway, I'm, I'm pulling in, and she says, you going to pull up front? Because we'd been there before with that same camper. I said, no, not this time. And I'm still praying, and I see the spot, and I feel comfort. And I pull up, and I... Now, this is not the bunkhouse. This is not the 30-second setup like you all saw on Facebook from last weekend or this last week. No, no. Th this is one that tests your marriage. <laughs> this is the one where you're, at the r you're there and, and everybody's looking at you at the rallies, all the secular folks, and you got Jesus Christ on the back, and you're like this, and you're smiling at your wife. Said, I said, pick it up this way. <laughs> so you're bickering with a smile. Well, anyway, we get it all set up. We're inside relaxing with my mama, and my dad gets off work, and he shows up. And he comes in all excited, and he doesn't say, hey, I'm glad you made it, son. Hey, I'm glad. Give me a hug. He says, you're going to have to move the camper. 
And I'm like, what? He goes, you, you got to come and see this. You got to move the camper. And I'm like, okay. And so I get up, my wife's been tagged. So we get out there and he shows me this big limb. It's big, rotten. There ain't even no bark on this limb. Looks like woodpecker's been putting holes in it for ages. And he looks up and he says, you got to move it. It's right. And it's, it is, it's right above the camper. And I go, oh. and I turn and look at Tammy and she goes, you did pray, didn't you? I said, well, yeah. She goes, well, that settles it. And she walks off. <laughs> now, my dad, there's nothing, I'm not even going to mention the denomination, but my dad, well, he didn't have the intimate relationship that I have with Jesus and believing. Now, this little sawed-off Texan's gone, and my dad's looking at me like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, Dad, been ma I'm happily married 36 years. <laughs> dad, we're not moving it today. And he's like, what? I said, look, let me talk to her. We'll probably move it tomorrow. Where would you like it to be? Well, I'll show you the safest place. So he takes me around back, and there's a grassy spot right by a window. He says, right there. I said, okay, I'll talk to her tomorrow, okay? But not tonight. And he's like, oh, okay. The next day, we go out, and we're riding. That's what bikers do, right? We go riding. It's only 20 miles away. It takes us about 100 miles to get there. I'm watching my little niece play softball, and we see it's starting to get cold. I'm like, what? It's July. It's getting cold. And there's a cloud behind us that's headed for Otterburn, the town that he lives in. And there's one coming towards us here. And I'm like, we're right in the middle of two cells. we got to go. And Tammy's like, are we chasing or are we going home? I said, we'll go home. For those of you who know, I'd, I would like to chase storms and get as close as I could without getting wet. It was one of my – anyway. So we get back, and I'm sitting on the porch. We didn't get wet. I'm playing the guitar. And these kids walk up, and they say, Dad, they say sir, you want us to help you move that tree off your house? I'm like, what? He said, yeah, let me take you around back. And I said, that is the exact location of where my dad showed me to put that trailer. So when you pray, believe God has a solution, and don't second guess yourself, which I'm getting ahead of myself again, amen? Don't second guess yourself. That picture is also, you know, it's under the album that says bringing the book to life. And uh, I'm glad I found that. And right over here, you can barely see it, but that is the trailer. On the other side of the house, still sitting under an old rotten limb that hasn't fallen. Praise God. The problem with too many immature Christians is they, they pray for God to fix everything, but they don't stand on the fact that he has the solution and he's already given you the answer, and you just got to believe it. Amen? The pro oh, Lord, I need this promotion. And then somebody else gets it that's not as qualified, and you're like, well, it was just the Lord's will. No, maybe God had given you some wisdom, and you would have paid attention. You would have wrote a lot better resume. Because it was requested to begin with, to have an updated resume. All right, before I keep meddling, let's get back to preaching, okay? What's it saying? It says, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea. So, and it says, don't expect to receive anything if you're doubting, if you're second-guessing yourself. That's... It's all in the scripture, the opening scripture this morning. Ask God for wisdom, believe God has a solution, and don't second guess yourself. When my dad, I did. Now, this message is not about accountability partners, but my wife is my accountability partner, amen? Had she not been out there, if that sold off text and hadn't said, well, that settles and walked off, I would have gave in. I know I would have. There's my daddy, you know? <laughs> we sow seed of doubt sometimes within the body because we say something like that. What dad, you know, if we're like-minded, dad should have said, did you pray about this? Well, yes, sir. Well, I guess that settles it. I'm going to pray too. Amen? Come on. Somebody need to hear that. Don't second guess yourself. Glory. Now, I remember a sister one time. You know, have you ever made a decision that you knew you weren't supposed to make? I mean... When you're thinking about making the decision, you don't seek the wisdom because you know God's going to tell you not to do it. So you go ahead and do something that you shouldn't do, like maybe. Oh, 
This sister of mine, now I didn't know her very long. I hadn't known her for a long time. We're at Dairy Queen, and she decides, she makes a choice, okay? She didn't see God's wisdom on this one. And she said, I need to get me this peanut butter perfect, but I, better, I don't know if I should or not. And I knew that she, you know, she was... Uh, she wanted to she wanted to continue to lose weight or at least maintain. I thought, well, that's a thousand calories. So I'm thinking that's why she's making this decision. And she decides soon. It's like, hey, praise God, you know, it's no problem to get a peanut butter parfait when you're trying to lose weight. You know, hey, it's a splurge day, right? We all have y'all have splurge days. Hey, man. But later I see her doing this. I'm like, what's wrong with her? Why are you doing that? She goes, well, I'm starting to tingle. I don't know how much more of this I can eat. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, well, I'm diabetic. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, you think I tell lies up here? Well, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that was actually true. Well, the preacher actually told the truth. Praise God. I'm glad I had a picture of my camper. You wouldn't have thought that story was true either. <laughs> yeah. Keep giving me keep giving me the material. We have a choice to keep our turn signal turned on or off too, don't we, brother? Where's he at? He's not in. Ask God for wisdom. Believe God has a solution. Don't second guess yourself. Mm -mm -mm. And <laughs> we got to focus on facts, not our emotions. That kind of goes with her emotions. Was man, I really want this. How many? I have. When I, I haven't for a long time, praise God, but I mean, I'm preaching to myself. I've made decisions based off my feelings. I have made decisions based off my emotions. You should not make a decision when you're depressed. But see, you shouldn't make a decision when you're all excited either. Pastor Billy, my mentor, is with Jesus now. But one of the, one of the things he taught me that was so important, you know, is he, he said, I don't never buy anything at the time that I'm really excited about it. I was like, do what? Because he's got all these toys. I'm like, he just goes and buys them. He said, no, no, no. He says, I tell him I'll be back tomorrow. And they're like, well, this deal may not be here. He says, then it wasn't meant to be. And he's getting some really good deals, you know. He said, you go home and you pray about it and you go to sleep. And if you wake up and you still don't have peace, you tell him and you call him. You say, hey, I'm going to have to think about it another day. I've done the opposite of that. I've bought something and I've got a three or four year note on it or longer. And I did it because I was all excited. You know, you're going to change your mind if you based it off of feelings. Some people get married because they fell in love, but they didn't seek God's counsel for a godly woman or a godly man. Come on. Amen. And those same emotions or those same feelings are the same ones that has you fallen out of love because you never really was in love because the marriage is a compromise. But God's book, our guide, which I'm way ahead of myself, that's number five. Amen. But if we don't seek it and find out what a godly woman or a godly husband is supposed to be like and base it off of the word of God, which is our guideline, we're destined, we're destined to fail. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> James, yeah. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. You know, and this one hit me hard because uh, I don't. Nobody in here has seen this sermon either, except for the Jordans. God just put on my heart to start looking at stuff I preached in 2007, and this one hasn't been preached since. And uh, you know, I just I, was, I pulled it up. I was like, wow, <laughs> God gave me that in 2007. Uh. James 1, 22 and 25 says, Do not merely listen to the word, because you deceive yourself if what? Do what it says. Mm. Do what it says. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks in the, at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed. He will be blessed in what he does. 
So, I mean, base your life on the Word. There it is. Those are the five principles for any decision. For whatever, God gives it to you. So, as simple as whether I should eat something or whether I should go somewhere, what I should wear, you know, whatever. Where I should park. Some of the things that we seem, seem trivial, they're not if you have medical issues. Should I eat this for breakfast? And if you have medical issues, you know, God's already telling you. Now, if you seek wisdom, God's going to tell you that. You're going to know. That's why a lot of times we don't ask God because we don't want to hear the truth. You know, I've told people before, they'll come to me and they're asking for what I think. The, you know, that's like my opinion or guidance. I'm like, well, you, you, you already know the answer. You're just hoping I'll tell you to do what you want to do. They're like, <laughs> come on. Any y'all been, any y'all approached me and I've done that to you? One, two. I mean, I knew there were some in here. I mean, I'm just, you know, because just like, I don't know, okay. And then they tell everybody else and nobody else comes and asks me. <laughs> but did you read God's response? He says, I mean, isn't it silly to ask God for wisdom and then not reference his guidebook? Brother Monty, I'm dating this girl and I don't know if I should marry her or not. I can't find Veronica in the Bible. Well, it'll tell you. It will tell you what a godly woman's supposed to be like. <laughs> well, she does this, she does that, and she does this. And well, well, but still, I just, well, there you go. There's off the feelings. Come on. Some of you here are probably facing major decisions. I've even had some of y'all, and maybe that's why God led me to this one, because some people have come up. They haven't told me what the decisions are, and they've asked for prayer, and, and they've been really touched. It's like, I just... The Holy Spirit's all over them. They're just like, I really need to be touched by God because I got a major decision to make in my life. And there's probably some of you sitting in here right now, and I, I guarantee you there's some watching. And you got a major decision to make in your life. And if you'll take these five principles and add them to that and just, just go over that, life's going to be good. Life will be good. I didn't say it'd be perfect, and I didn't say there wouldn't be a storm, but life's going to be good because you're on the right track. Amen? I can't think of anything that brings more stress than not being able to make up your mind about something. You know, some people, when they ha go to a restaurant and they get the, get the menu, they're like, yes. And they're like, what, what am I going to have today? And there's other people, when they open up the menu, they're like, oh, it's, they stress out because they've got to make a decision. <laughs> I guess, bottom line, I'm going to finish up with this. If God is your God, listen to him. If the world is your God, so be it. Don't listen to him. Do whatever you want. That's in the word too. 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? Come on now. If the Lord be God, follow him. I like Elijah. He just tell him like it is. And then he says, But if Baal, then follow him. Now, if you all remember the story, he's, looking, he's talking to 450 prophets of Baal. <laughs> they didn't make it. Read the rest of the story. I mean, it's pretty good, but <laughs> they didn't answer a word because they were of the world. Amen. And God's talking to you right now, right where you're sitting. He's like, Tate, I know you got a decision to make. Seek me. Ask me for the wisdom. Believe I have your solution. Don't second guess yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Where are we going to go? We're going to look in that word. Amen. 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 I'm going to heaven. So if God is real, follow him. Amen. If he's real in your heart, follow him. How many people did this touch this morning? You got a decision to make and you're like, wow, God was touching. Glory to God. God, you know, God, God had that for you. You know, praise God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again. This powerful message, a short message uh, from the archives. <laughs> that you had me go find. Lord, I, we all have decisions to make, and Lord, just put those five principles into our hearts so that we do absolutely seek your wisdom because we know that you have the solution, or at least give us that peace so we know and that we don't second-guess ourselves, Lord. Absolutely not. And that we base off the facts that you have written in the Word that we need to go to 
instead of our emotions and our feelings. We claim, believe, and we expect this touch from the Holy Spirit and guidance for making our decisions so that we can make up our minds about some things starting right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank <laughs> you.